The Foo Fighters are one of the biggest rock bands in the world. Please welcome Foo Fighters. From writing music that saved lives to shocking hospitalizations, and from rocking so hard that you cause an earthquake to a death that shook the world. To be Foo Fighters drummer, you have to be one of the best rock drummers in the world. And it just so happens that this band has two of them. This is the impossible job of Foo Fighters drummer. Have you ever written music that's kept someone alive for weeks? Well, that's exactly what happened when a terrible gold mine collapse left two Australian miners trapped half a mile below ground for two weeks. And you won't believe what kept them going while they waited for their rescue. They wanted food, water, and your songs. It really blew me away. Having your drumming be so powerful that it actually helps keep people alive while trapped underground, that sounds pretty impossible to me, but who could be the drummer of such an epic band? This is Taylor Hawkins of Foo Fighters, of course. How much money did you spend on them pants? $4.99. Show it to him. Come on, give him some. Let, let's see it. been known as one of the best rock drummers of all time. He is one of the few drummers who could immediately play drums from the moment that he picked up sticks. I remember I was 10 years old. I had a neighbor. He said, just sit on the drums. I want to show you a beat. I sat down and went. For some reason, it was just there. And he, and he was like, you're a drummer. And in that single moment, he knew he'd be a drummer for the rest of his life. This is how you know a drummer is special, especially because when I first picked up sticks, I sounded like this. Taylor's drumming was destined to rock the whole world, literally. That's right, the Foo Fighters once rocked so hard that they created an earthquake. In 2011, Taylor's insane drumming drove a massive audience of 50,000 people to dance so hard that it registered as seismic activity. concert registered the same levels as a volcanic tremor. Crazy earthquake starting on the bus. Holy crap, drumming so hard that the earth starts to shake? I'm having a really hard time just holding up this ridiculously tiny microphone. That's just another day of work for Foo Fighters drummer, but can Taylor handle his most important job? Being able to rickroll anyone at a moment's notice. If you're a member of Planet Earth, how do you do fellow kids? Then you've most likely heard this infamous song. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down. It's the song that's held humanity together during our darkest times. And being a drummer for one of the world's biggest rock bands means that when the stars align and give you the perfect opportunity to rickroll someone, you have a responsibility to make it happen. We show up to this festival in Tokyo. So me and Taylor are sitting there trying to learn it. And then we have to go on. And we're playing. This is 20 minutes later. I look over and Rick Astley's on the fucking side of the stage. I fucking run up. I'm like, hey, I'm Dave. He's like, hey, man, I'm Rick. I'm like, I know. I said, we just learned your fucking song 20 minutes ago. Do you want to come out here and do it right now? And he said, yes. It was like all the stars aligned. Okay, well, maybe that isn't the most impossible part of the job, but how about winning an impossible amount of Grammys? Or holding an impossibly small mic? I feel insecure now. We started this band because we love playing music and we just wanted to have a good time. So then you get nominated for album of the year and you're just like, you can't even believe it. That's right, the Foo Fighters currently hold the Grammy record for most wins in the best rock album category. I think we always knew that we were, you know, Grammy bound, but uh, <laughs> no, I mean, we had no idea. Foo Fighters now have 15 Grammys under their belts, and in 2022, they swept all three rock categories at the awards. Maybe uh, they could have shared one of those Grammys with me. The Grammy goes to Cage the Elephant.
This band is absolutely massive, but that is just the tip of the iceberg because coming up, we are talking about insane hospitalizations and spending millions of dollars on songs that never even came out. But how did this all begin and why is it so impossible to be their drummer? Well, that question can be answered in just three words. Dave freaking Grohl. Considered by many as one of the world's best drummers, songwriters, and frontmen, all wrapped up into one impossible person. And I walked past him all scared, and he goes, hey, dude, come here. And I was like, me? And he's like, yeah, come here. And I went, hi, man. And you're like, dude, you're really good tonight. And I was like, he's cool too, man. This guy is truly insane. And despite being most recognized as the singer for Foo Fighters, Dave will always tell you that he considers himself a drummer, first and foremost. Do you think of yourself primarily as a drummer? Oh, or dude, yeah, absolutely. Dave was always so sure of his path that he dropped out of high school and toured the US and Europe playing drums in his punk band Scream at just age 17. So I started touring in vans, little vans and playing like little venues and stuff like that when I was like 17 or 18. And so that was kind of where I'd like cut my teeth and learned how to do it. Even though you may not have heard of that band, you've definitely heard of Dave's next band, Nirvana. When I joined Nirvana, it was sort of the same way. Like we were in a van playing small places that held one or 200 people. And then the band got really big, really quick. For years, Dave Grohl wrote some of the most iconic drum beats and fills for Nirvana, like these ones. Nirvana was a juggernaut success that changed rock music forever, and Dave's impossible drumming was at the forefront of it all. But the band immediately dissolved upon the death of legendary frontman Kurt Cobain. I stopped listening to music after Kurt died because it was so emotional just hearing it. I didn't want to hear it on the radio, I didn't want to play it, I didn't want to join another band. And then I, after a while I realized that it was the one thing that was going to help me get through everything. Dave is so freakishly talented that he recorded the drums, all the other instruments, and vocals by himself for Foo Fighters' very first self-titled album. And he did it in an impossibly short amount of time. <laughs> So he had made the first record all by himself. Yeah. Which is amazing. He did it like in five days, of course. And being Dave Grohl. Being Dave yeah, Grohl. Just, yeah, five days. He's, he's brilliant. Yeah, that is seriously impressive because as drummers, I think a lot of us know what it's like when we try to play other instruments. But even though Dave can record songs at a breakneck pace, there's one thing in particular that he's incredibly deliberate about. And that's writing catchy drum beats that get stuck in your head. If you make a song and people air drum to it that don't play the drums, people that don't know what they're doing, then you're gold, dude. That's amazing. One of the most iconic examples of this is the drum part for the song, My Hero. The drum parts in this song are genius because they are powerful, simple, and catchy. But the way that he recorded this song was also genius. And that's because they did double drums on the track. They recorded one take in a cement room and another in a ginormous parking garage and blended them together to create a huge sound. This would prove to be an impossible job because in today's digital world, it would be easy to line up two drum performances and make them perfect, but this song was recorded on tape, which meant that Grohl's timing had to be absolutely perfect for these two drums to line up together. That's just another example of how impossibly good Dave Grohl's drumming really is. These parts from Foo Fighters and Nirvana are so iconic that I think every single drummer should know and learn how to play these songs. That's why we've created in-depth playable notation for every single one of these songs where you can solo out the drums and loop sections to really make sure that you get it down on my online drum school, DBO Academy. Click right here to get instant access. But there was a problem with all of this. Dave never wanted to be a solo artist. He wanted to be in a band. 
and that meant he had to step away from the drum throne. He had to sort of eventually give up the reins so that it could be a real band. And being the drummer for one of the world's best drummers turned out to be more of an impossible task than Dave could have ever realized. While touring in Europe, Taylor suffered a heroin overdose that sent him into a coma for over two weeks. It's been said that Dave didn't leave Taylor's side until he woke up. I just felt so totally helpless, you know? So I sat with him for those couple weeks until he woke up. I honestly could not even imagine if one of my band members was in a coma like that. If you've ever been in a band, you, you know that these people are like your family. But what was it that caused Dave and Taylor to become so close? Well. Let's dive a little bit more into Taylor's story to find out. Now, Taylor actually wasn't the band's first drummer to take the reins from Dave. That terrifying job went to William Goldsmith. But unfortunately, things quickly turned ugly. While recording the band's second album, Grohl was so unhappy with Goldsmith's parts that he ended up re-recording all of the drums on his own. Goldsmith publicly accused Dave of being a bully and reportedly quit the band, but his successor tells a different story. He couldn't handle it, so that's I stepped in and I called Dave myself and I said, I'm your drummer, sorry. And with that impossible confidence, Taylor cemented himself in history as Foo Fighters drummer. But who was Taylor and what was so special about him that allowed him to take the throne for 25 years? My two first major inspirations, and I would say probably the two guys that shaped a lot of what I do, Roger Taylor and Stuart Copeland. And the funny thing is they're so far away from each other on the spectrum of drummers. With a healthy obsession with drumming and a wide variety of amazing influences, it's no wonder that Taylor and Dave eventually became best friends. Yeah, we were like in love with each other. The first time we had a beer together, we we're like, we're gonna be best friends for the rest of our lives. Okay, these two are adorable, almost as adorable as this tiny little microphone that I'm calling William. Just because they were adorable, that did not mean that Taylor didn't take his job seriously. In fact, he said almost every show scared him crapless. When I walk up on stage at one of those places, I have major butterflies. I'm scared crapless every time. If there's 30,000 people that paid good money, it's responsibility. a responsibility for me to hold the band together. And that fear may have been the most intense when Hawkins had to record his first studio session with the band. Would he end up failing to impress Dave like the drummer before him? Actually, yes. I got in a similar somewhat situation as the first drummer. I was just green. I was having a really hard time learning how to play in the studio. Because I mean, you know, if you're going to play drums on a record for Dave Grohl, it's got to be really like top shelf. This job is not easy, but we're just warming up because coming up, we're going to be breaking down Taylor's drumming secrets and an impossible loss. But first, let's talk about the time that the band threw away millions. Can you imagine drumming for a whole whole album and spending over a million dollars and then throwing it all away? Well, that's exactly what happened with the fourth Foo Fighters album, One by One. Not only did the band throw away millions, but they almost broke up for good. That's when it sort of seemed questionable. Like, you know, have we expired yet? Or should we keep going? But it's good that the band found their groove again and re-recorded the whole album because it ended up winning them two Grammys. And their success only grew from there, but not all successes have a happy ending because eventually the band would face their most impossible challenge yet. 
In 2022, Taylor Hawkins suddenly and tragically died while on tour in Colombia. Tributes have been pouring in for Foo Fighters drummer Taylor Hawkins. Well, the music world today are mourning the shocking death of Foo Fighters drummer Taylor Hawkins. His musical spirit and infectious laughter will live on. This was a loss that stopped music in its tracks all across the world. At just 50 years old, we lost one of the greatest rock drummers in the world world due to an overdose that caused his heart to collapse. When I heard this news, it really affected me. And I'm sure it really affected a lot of drummers across the world because Taylor was and is an inspiration to us all. To celebrate his contribution to music and to us drummers, let's unpack some of what made Taylor such a legend on the drum kit. Taylor smashed his drums harder than almost any other rock drummer. And that's because he understood that the key to the Foo Fighters sound was big energy. And his animalistic drumming became very clear in songs like these. going to be giving one of you lucky subscribers a drum set courtesy of Sweetwater. Thank you. Thank you. I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best place to buy any music gear. It's yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. And speaking of gear, Taylor had some insane gear on his drum set that made his sound totally unique. The Roto Toms and the Timpani drum. Plus, Taylor's Gretsch kit and Zildjian cymbals gave him a classic sound. And if you're trying to replicate Taylor's sound with new gear, there's no better place to go than Sweetwater. Yeah, it's better than Amazon. Not only do you get the fast and free shipping, but it comes with a two year warranty on any gear that you purchase and the best customer service in the entire world. And I actually created a page on Sweetwater with Taylor's exact drum and cymbal setup so that you can shop it and get his exact sound right below. But it wasn't just Taylor's sound that made him incredible, it was his black belt that made him incredible. His black belt of the drumming basics, I should say. Most drummers try to rush through the basics so that they can get to advanced stuff as quickly as possible. But Taylor took the basics like quarter note kicks and single stroke rolls and leaned into them as much as possible to make them sound incredible. I don't think anyone would want to get in the fight with this heavy hitter, but that didn't stop a surprising feud from surfacing. That's right, Taylor was never one to back away from a fight. So when America's favorite uncle, John Stamos, stepped in on his turf, things got serious. Stamos is a good buddy of mine. He's a good guy. I really like him a lot. But I'm a little upset with him, actually. I gotta be honest with you, because I was supposed to do that Geico commercial. Where he flips the stick? That was mine. Originally, that was mine. They decided to go with Stamos because he's better looking. But I'm the best stick flipper around. Sorry, Stamos. Okay, so maybe things didn't get that serious, but they certainly did when Dave Grohl and Taylor's friendship hit the ropes and it nearly broke up the band. Not long after Hawkins' initial overdose, the band was scheduled to play Coachella, but things were not okay behind the scenes. When I went off to play drums with Queens of the Stone Age, Taylor totally resented me for that. I just went through this awful trauma you know i was supposed to be happy that dave's having such a good time but i wasn't you know i wasn't happy for you to go play with another band i will be leaving as soon as we finish this then i'm out of here and then we played the next day and we played great <laughs> Right after that electric performance, the band wrote the song Times Like These, which became one of the band's mega hit songs that's been streamed over 185 million times. I guess it's hard to stay mad when you have two impossibly great drummers who think the world of each other. I love you. I love you more? No, like I really love you. No, but I really love no, you. No, I love you more. No, 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 no. But there's something that this drummer doesn't do that might shock you. 
Taylor does not play to a metronome live, which is crazy when you think that nowadays almost every band plays along to a metronome. I know my band does, but only a drummer with impossibly great timing like Taylor can ditch the click track altogether and just freaking rock. See, there's so many bands now that they get up on stage and the drummer puts his in-ears in and he pr they press a button and it goes one, two, three, four, and then he plays along to a click track while all this stuff is coming out of speakers. That's fine if that's what you wanna do. That's not what we do. The Foo Fighters put on an insane show and to pull all of this off, you have to have a master on the kit. But the impossible job of Foo Fighters drummer gets more impossible because coming up, we're talking about sneaking around in secret bands and even walking away from the kit like Taylor did one night in Iceland. Yeah, Taylor removed himself from the kit during a performance in Iceland in front of 20,000 people. But why would he do that? Well, it was so that this could happen. Dave's eight-year-old daughter, Harper, on stage to play drums. We were in Iceland and I said, hey, you want to get up in front of 20,000 people and do that We Will Rock You thing? She's like, okay. We will, we will rock you. I guess that makes Harper the fourth official drummer of the Foo Fighters. Drumming in front of 20,000 people at just age eight, that does seem pretty impossible. Or maybe it's just nepotism. That's the DNA right there. <laughs> she grows with it. To get on the roller coaster for a little while. <laughs> if you think touring is less crazy when you have kids, you would be mistaken. You think the backstage was crazy 12 years ago? You should see it now, man. Kids could tear up a backstage faster than <laughs> ACDC ever could. <laughs> But we say the same thing at the end of every tour. It's like, <laughs> mark my f***ing words, I am never no, doing this no, ever again. Yeah. yeah, I look at everybody and go, I don't want to see you, I don't want to see you, I want to see you for a f***ing year. Don't even talk about music. And after six months, I'm like, I got some songs I want to do, I miss you, you know? Yeah. Touring the world is amazing and also completely exhausting, but nothing helps to reignite your creative spark like playing in a secret band. And that is exactly what Dave Grohl and Taylor Hawkins do when they jam with Hawkins' secret cover band, Chevy Metal. So size doesn't matter? Uh, not when it comes to the Chevy Metal. <laughs> <laughs> It's all a bit of fun for Dave Grohl, Taylor Hawkins and their mates, playing their favourite rock songs as their alter ego, Chevy Metal. Hawkins told Rolling Stone that the band is a place to be invigorated and make music with friends. And you know that our boy Taylor was more than just a drummer. The dude could frickin' sing as well. Him and Dave are impossibly talented because they would do this at their shows all the time. Come on, Taylor, come say something. Unfortunately, that was the last time the world got to hear Taylor's singing voice before he passed away. You know that no one else can make you smile or laugh or dance or sing like he could. What would you do if you had a friend for 25 years who passed away? Well, if you're Dave Grohl, you would throw not one, but two impossible tribute concerts. These two six hour long concerts were lovingly performed by over 50 world famous musicians. It created some unforgettable moments like Queen and Sam Ryder paying tribute to Hawkins' performance of Somebody to Love. <laughs> Also included artists like Paul McCartney, ACDC, Lars Ulrich, The Police's Stuart Copeland, Travis Barker, Chad Smith, Tommy Lee, and so many more. But there are two moments in particular that will be cemented in music history. First being this heart-wrenching performance of Times Like These by Dave Grohl. 
And it also included the heart-wrenching performance of My Hero with Taylor Hawkins' son Shane behind the kit. The look on Shane's face says it all. Taylor will be tremendously missed. But what happens now? Who could possibly replace this incredibly great drummer? Well, it seems like legendary drummer Josh Freeze is stepping up to the plate, which won't be the first impossible role he's tried to fill. Click right here to see what happened when he tried to replace Paramore's drummer. And to learn Foo Fighters' best songs on the drums, click right here for a free trial to DBO Academy.